Marilyn Monroe has been an American icon, known for her beauty, performances, and personality. However, these eerie photos reveal the struggles and pain she experienced behind the scenes, from tumultuous relationships to battles with addiction and mental health. It is believed that Monroe underwent several cosmetic procedures, including plastic surgery, during her lifetime, such as a rhinoplasty and a silicone prosthesis in her jaw. Marilyn Monroe was a dazzling star in Hollywood's golden era, but her life off the screen was anything but glamorous. She struggled with depression, anxiety, and addiction, seeking solace in drugs and alcohol to cope with the pressures of fame. Her relationships were tumultuous and fraught with instability, leaving her feeling isolated and vulnerable. Despite her immense talent and undeniable charisma, Marilyn was often exploited and mistreated by those in the industry. Marilyn Monroe, born Norma Jean Mortensen, was born in Los Angeles to Gladys Pearl Baker, who put her up for adoption two weeks after giving birth. Monroe spent much of her time in orphanages and under foster care due to her mother's mental instability. Her mother even showed up at the foster home and tried to take her daughter back. Monroe's life was chaotic even from a young age, with one of her earliest memories being her mother's attempt to smother her in her crib with a pillow. Due to Gladys' mental and financial instability, Monroe was placed with foster parents Albert and Ida Bollander, who raised her as an evangelical Christian imposing deeply conservative rules that limited her childhood experiences. Gladys initially lived with Monroe's foster parents, but later had to move back to Los Angeles due to longer work shifts, visiting her daughter on weekends for sightseeing. It wasn't perfect, but it provided Monroe with some sense of normalcy in her tumultuous life. At age 5, Monroe discovered her desire to be an actress and escape into her own world through playing house. After caring for Monroe for a long time, the Bollanders officially decided to adopt Marilyn, seeing her as their own daughter. Baker was on the road to recovery and decided to give motherhood another shot. Baker claimed she was stable enough to take care of her daughter and purchased a small house in Hollywood for the two of them, but a few months later she had a mental breakdown and was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Her mother was committed to the Metropolitan State Hospital, and Monroe became a ward of the state, spending the rest of her life in and out of different hospitals. After being declared a ward of the state, Monroe spent a year with actors George and Maude Atkinson, where she allegedly experienced sexual abuse. Shortly after, Grace McKee Goddard became her legal guardian. During her time with the Goddard family, Marilyn Monroe was reportedly a victim of molestation by Erwin Doc McSee. When she finally spoke up about her experience, Grace Goddard allegedly responded with disbelief and mistrust. Monroe found a permanent home with Anna Atchison lower in the Sawtell district, 
which proved to be one of the most stable times in her life, but it was far too short-lived. Living with Lower, Marilyn attended Emerson Junior High School where she excelled in writing and worked for the school's newspaper. Despite her struggles, she achieved her dreams but also faced tragedy and turmoil. Regrettably, Lower's health issues meant that Monroe had to return to live in the Goddard home sometime between 1940 and 1941. After graduating from Emerson Junior High, Marilyn attended Van Nuys High School where she was a shy and introverted student. She struggled academically and had a difficult time fitting in with her classmates, but was described as hardworking and determined, passionate about acting. She participated in school plays and talent shows, and even took acting lessons outside of school before dropping out. Marilyn Monroe married her neighbor's son, James Jim Doherty, at 16 to avoid going back to the orphanage, and dropped out of high school to become a housewife, as her family was unable to relocate to West Virginia due to state laws. After less than a year of marriage, Marilyn's husband joined the Merchant Marine and was stationed on Catalina Island before being shipped to the Pacific, leaving her to find her own path to stardom. Following her husband's departure for the Pacific in 1944, Marilyn relocated to her in-law's home and began working the day shift at the Radioplane Munitions Factory in Van Nuys, California where she helped assemble parts for airplane and artillery shells. The factory, owned by actor Reginald Denny, employed numerous women who were essential in producing weapons and supplies for the war. Monroe began taking photos for the United States Army Air Force First Motion Picture Unit to encourage female workers in factories, but none of the pictures were used. After quitting, she started modeling for photographer David Conover. Unfortunately, the photos were likely destroyed shortly after the war. After signing a contract with Blue Book Model Agency in late 1945, she straightened and dyed her hair blonde to become more employable. She mostly did advertisements in men's magazines, but in order to break into the world of film she had to change her name to something more marketable. Marilyn Monroe's new name was a combination of her mother's maiden name, Monroe, and her grandfather's first name, Marilyn. She chose this name because she felt that it was more glamorous and would help her stand out. Marilyn's first two film roles were brief dialogues in Dangerous Years and Scudder Who. Scudder Hey. After enrolling in acting school, 20th Century Fox dropped her from her contract, claiming she was too shy. In March of 1948, Harry Cohn of Columbia Pictures signed Monroe. After raising her hairline and bleaching her hair even lighter to platinum blonde to turn her into more of a Rita Hayworth type, she starred in a low-budget musical titled Ladies of the Chorus before leaving the studio in October of that year to return to modeling. In 1950, Marilyn's career took off after becoming friends with Johnny Hyde, the vice president of the William Morris Agency, and landing small roles in popular films. In 1951, 
Marilyn Monroe became more visible as a presenter at the Academy Awards and had supporting roles in various films. She gained a strong following, particularly among members of the armed forces, and was even named Miss Cheesecake of 1951 by Stars and Stripes Army newspaper. Monroe faced controversy in 1952 when it was revealed she posed nude for a calendar in 1949, but she and the studio decided to be upfront about it, which ultimately paid off in her favor. Marilyn Monroe starred in three films that were released in 1953, solidifying her place in Hollywood as one of the most famous actresses of the year. Despite her success, Monroe felt mistreated on the set of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, stating, I couldn't even get a dressing room. She felt that she was not treated like a star. Marilyn's tumultuous relationship with Joe DiMaggio reached an adir on their honeymoon in Japan, when she traveled to Korea to visit over 60,000 United States Marines. Despite her personal life being a mess, she signed a $100,000 deal with Fox and started filming The Seven Year Itch, which produced her most iconic photo. Following the filming of The Seven Year Itch, Monroe moved from Los Angeles to New York City, established her own production company, and sued 20th Century Fox for breach of contract. She also filed for divorce from DiMaggio and began dating playwright Arthur Miller. Monroe and Miller met in 1950 and married on June 29, 1956, at the home of Elia Kazan, a film and theater director. The marriage was Monroe's third and Miller's first, Miller was known for works such as Death of a Salesman and The Crucible. Monroe was already a major Hollywood star at the time of their marriage, and the couple was often in the public eye. In 1957, Monroe's dependence on barbiturates grew out of control. Her drug dependency was only deepened following an ectopic pregnancy that year, and a miscarriage in 1958. At the same time, Monroe's career was in a brief lull following the languid performance of The Prince and the Showgirl. Even though the film failed to perform as well as Monroe hoped, her co-star Dame Sybil told director and co-star Laurence Olivier, Larry, you did well in that scene but with Marilyn up there, nobody will be watching you. Her manner and timing are just too delicious. We need her desperately. She's really the only one of us who knows how to act in front of a camera. After her miscarriage in 1958, Monroe returned to Hollywood and was cast in the Billy Wilder film Some Like It Hot. Despite her unreliable behavior on set, Wilder admitted that he was happy with Monroe's performance. In her final Life magazine interview, Monroe admitted that filming with co-star Tony Curtis was a low point in her career, stating, You've read there was some actor that once said about me that kissing me was like kissing Hitler. If I have to do intimate love scenes with somebody who really has these kinds of feelings toward me, then my fantasy can come into play. In other words, out with him, in with my fantasy. He was never there. In 1960, Monroe and Miller's marriage was over, leaving her without an anchor for the first time in years. Even without Miller in her corner, Monroe's final film, The Misfits, was written for the actress by her ex-husband. While filming The Misfits, Monroe suffered from gallstone pain and her drug addiction often interfered with filming, leaving production to work around her tempestuous schedule. 
In August, filming was halted due to Marilyn needing detox in a Los Angeles hospital. Even though Monroe was dealing with numerous health and drug issues, director John Huston noted that she was stellar when she was on camera. He stated, she, was not pretending to an emotion. It was the real thing. She would go deep down within herself and find it and bring it up into consciousness. In February 1954, Marilyn Monroe visited United States troops in Korea during the Korean War, performing a set of ten songs and wowing the audience with her sultry voice and stunning beauty despite the freezing weather. During her final year, Monroe faced depression, drug abuse, and rumors of an affair with President Kennedy. She also had to take a break from filming due to sinusitis, but still managed to perform at Kennedy's birthday celebration before passing away from barbiturate poisoning. Marilyn Monroe's divorce from Joe DiMaggio was a searing expose of the darker side of celebrity romance, a tale of passion and betrayal played out on the front pages of the tabloids. Marilyn Monroe's tumultuous relationship with Hollywood is well known, and her work on the 1954 film There's No Business Like Show Business is a particularly poignant chapter. After being suspended for refusing to film the girl in pink tights, Monroe was backed into a corner. She knew that she had to make a film, but she was determined to hold out for something better. And so it was that she initially refused to work on There's No Business Like Show Business, just as she had for the previous project. Monroe was a shrewd negotiator and knew how to play hardball. In the end, Fox agreed to give her a pay increase of $3,000 a week and promised her that her next vehicle would be the seven-year itch. It was a victory, of sorts, but one can only imagine the toll that this constant battle for respect and recognition took on one of Hollywood's brightest stars. Marilyn Monroe was often typecast as a Daffy Dame, but she was more than just a pretty face and yearned to be taken seriously as an actress. Despite her iconic image, those who knew her saw a complex and intelligent woman pushing against the constraints placed upon her. Marilyn Monroe's trip to Korea in 1954 was a significant event, showcasing her as a true American icon. She entertained over 60,000 U.S. Marines with songs from her films, bringing glamour to a war-torn landscape and symbolizing hope for the soldiers. In 1954, Marilyn Monroe was a big star in Hollywood, but she was still undervalued and limited by her contract with 20th Century Fox. Marilyn Monroe's marriage to Joe DiMaggio in 1954 was a story of passion and heartbreak. Their relationship was doomed from the start, a victim of the pressures and expectations that surrounded them. Despite their obvious love for one another, they could not escape the glare of the public eye and the constant scrutiny of the press. In 1956, Marilyn Monroe achieved a major victory over the oppressive Hollywood system by renegotiating her contract with Fox Studios, gaining unprecedented creative control. Marilyn Monroe's marriage to playwright Arthur Miller was heavily criticized, with the media reducing her to just a hourglass figure and insinuating that her connection to Miller was nothing more than a ploy for attention. Critics like Walter Winchell were quick to pounce on the relationship, 
highlighting the narrow-mindedness and superficiality of the media and society as a whole. In 1955, Marilyn Monroe founded her own production company, Marilyn Monroe Productions, MMP, and relocated to Manhattan to study acting with Lee Strasberg, determined to become more than just a pretty face. Despite ongoing divorce proceedings with Joe DiMaggio, Monroe continued her relationship with him while also exploring other romantic interests, including Marlon Brando and Arthur Miller. Monroe's refusal to end her relationship with Miller led to the FBI opening a file on her, making her a target of scrutiny and suspicion. But Monroe refused to be silenced or held back by the judgments of others, and continued to follow her own path, regardless of the consequences. Marilyn Monroe's divorce from Joe DiMaggio was one of the most painful experiences of her life. Marilyn Monroe's visit to Korea in 1954 was significant, as she put her career on hold to show support for the soldiers. Her performances were memorable and brought joy to the troops, further cementing her status as an icon. Marilyn Monroe's visit to the United States Marines serving in Korea in 1954 was a momentous occasion, one that would be etched in the annals of history. At that time, she was on the brink of becoming a global sensation, her star power soaring to stratospheric heights. Yet, it was her unwavering dedication to her country and the troops that drove her to embark on this noble mission, an act that would forever alter the lives of those brave soldiers. Monroe's presence among the troops was a ray of hope, a beacon of light that brought joy and comfort to the hearts of the warriors who had been fighting a gruesome war. Her visit was not just a gesture of goodwill, but a testament to the enduring spirit of the American people, a spirit that refused to be broken, even in the darkest of times. Monroe's visit to the troops was a triumph of the human spirit, an affirmation of the enduring bond that connects all Americans, a bond that would inspire generations to come. In 1951, Marilyn Monroe was a rising star, declared Miss Cheesecake of 1951 by the Stars and Stripes, foretelling her future cultural icon status. Her seven-year contract with 20th Century Fox was a testament to her immense potential and the studio's faith in her abilities, despite feeling like a decorative object in her early films. Marilyn Monroe's relationship with playwright Arthur Miller was a tale of passion and drama, a love story that was destined to capture the imaginations of generations to come. They first met in 1951, when Elia Kazan introduced Miller to Monroe on the set of, As Young As You Feel. But it wasn't until 1955 that their relationship took a romantic turn, after they had both ended their previous marriages. Monroe's love for Miller was deep and unwavering, and she expressed it in the form of love letters that revealed her undying loyalty to him. She even converted to Judaism for their wedding, a move that spoke volumes about her commitment to the relationship. The ceremony itself was a reflection of their love, with rings inscribed with the words, now is forever. Their marriage, which lasted for six years, was not without its challenges, but it was a testament to the strength of their bond and the power of their love. In the end, their love story was a reflection of the tumultuous times they lived in, a time when love and passion could conquer all, but also a time when the weight of the world could tear even the strongest of bonds apart. Marilyn Monroe's early on-screen career had its ups and downs, but she remained determined to make her mark in the entertainment industry. In 1948, she was signed to Columbia and her look was modeled after the sultry beauty of Rita Hayworth, with platinum blonde hair that would become her trademark. 
However, her only film at the studio was the low-budget musical Ladies of the Chorus, which did little to advance her career. Despite being dropped from her Columbia contract in 1949, Monroe was determined to become an iconic figure in Hollywood. In 1956, Marilyn Monroe's life was filled with triumphs and tragedies as she filmed The Prince and the Showgirl at Pinewood Studios in England, despite conflicts with co-star Laurence Olivier and personal problems. Marilyn Monroe's early Hollywood days were marked by desperation, ambition, and self-doubt. Despite her efforts, producers were unimpressed, claiming she was too shy to act and lacking in looks to be a star. But Monroe was determined to make it happen. In 1954, Marilyn Monroe's performance in the seven-year itch transformed her into a global icon, stealing the show with her unparalleled beauty and unforgettable presence. The photographs of Monroe standing over a subway grate captured the imaginations of millions and catapulted her to the pinnacle of celebrity. In 1955, Marilyn Monroe rode a pink elephant at the Ringling Brothers Circus in front of 18,000 fans, proving that she knew how to capture the public's attention and use her celebrity for good. In 1955, Marilyn Monroe's personal life was in shambles despite her fame and success. She was fighting with Fox Studios over her contract, her image, and her artistic vision, and the strain was taking its toll. In The filming of The Misfits was a production plagued by trouble and turmoil, with tensions running high on and off the set. Director John Huston was forced to shut down production in August 1960 when Monroe was hospitalized for relaxation and depression treatment, leaving the film in limbo and the cast and crew on edge. Monroe's frequent lateness and occasional no-shows only added to the mounting sense of chaos and disarray. During the filming of The Misfits, Marilyn Monroe faced challenges with her role and her health, struggling with her husband's evolving script and battling severe pain from gallstones and a worsening drug addiction. <laughs>